Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the PMCC so we can answer questions from exercise 1b. Now PMCC stands for Product Moment Correlation Coefficient. It's basically a measurement of how um, how perfectly correlated a set of data is. Um, a, a set of data that looks like this where it's perfectly in line um, and a line of best fit will go straight through all of the coordinates exactly will have a correlation, product moments, correlation coefficient of one exactly. And the letter we use for PMCC is the letter R. So here R is equal to one. When the data is slightly uh, off center in terms of the line of best fit, then that's gonna have a high product moments correlation coefficient. The lower it is towards zero, the less correlated it's going to be. So for example, product moment correlation coefficient of this might be 0.7. It doesn't matter how steep the line is, it matters how close the points are to the line. So remember, the it doesn't measure the gradient, it just measures how well the two sets of data are correlated. And the last one, if it's going downhill, then what we say is that has a negative product moments correlation coefficient. Basically, R is going to be a number between one to minus one, negative correlation on this side, positive correlation on this side, zero means no correlation at all. Okay, so let's see how we can use this in a question then and how we might work out the product moments correlation coefficient. So from the large data set, we have the daily mean wind speed, that's W, um, and the daily maximum gust, that's G, recorded for the first days in September in Hearn, 1987. State the meaning of N-A in the table, classic um, large data set question there. N-A represents that the table indicates that no data is available on those days. The measuring instruments didn't work or, or somehow no data was recorded on that day. Part B, calculate the product moments correlation coefficient for the remaining eight days. Now, all of the work here is actually done on your calculator, which is lovely. So grab your calculator, hit menu, option number six, first of all. Then we want option number two. Now you can see option number two here is y equals a plus bx. That's gonna give us a straight line, um, a straight line of best fit. A here is effectively the C from y equals mx plus C, and the B here is effectively the gradient from y equals mx plus C. Uh, you could try and make yourself a quadratic, um, a quadratic line of best fit, or a logarithmic line of best fit, for, but for the benefit of A-level maths, we're just going to be going with a straight line of best fit. So option number two. And now you've got to type in your data. Now you might not see the frequency column come up on your calculator. It actually doesn't matter if it has or hasn't. You're going to now type in the W set of data in as X and the G set of data as Y. Now once you've done that, you then need to hit the option button. And you're looking for option number four, regression calculation now. So hit option number four. And what happens is you get this screen here. So you get A as the value 1.85, roughly, B as the value 2.59, roughly, and R here, R, that R value there is your product moments correlation coefficient, 0.953, roughly, great, that's almost perfect correlation there, 0.95 is a pretty good rating for your correlation. So 0.953 is the PMCC. With reference to your answer in part B, comment on the suitability of a linear regression model for this data. Since the product moment correlation coefficient is 0.9533, which is close to one, there is very strong positive correlation between these data. Hence, a linear regression model is definitely suitable. Right then, your turn to have a go at this question here then. This question here requires you to do a little bit more it requires you to turn a set of nonlinear data into a linear set of data by logging the amount of atoms after a certain amount of time. So pause the video and try this question out. Right. 
Right, so Caden, so the number of atoms of a radioactive substance N is measured at various times T after the start of an experiment. The table of data shows the results. So the data is coded using X equals T and Y equals log of N. Copy and complete the table showing the values of log N. So what we're going to need to do then is first of all do log of 231. The value for that is a 2.36 log of 41 is going to be 1.61 log of 17 is going to be 1.23 log of 7 is going to be 0 0.85 and log of 2 is going to be 0 0.30 okay calculate the project moments correlation coefficient for the coded set of data so the data that i'm going to type into my calculator is the time because that's the x variable and then it's going to be the y variable of log of n so I'm going to type in this set of data here and I'm going to now effectively ignore the log n so the atoms n column so grab your calculator then and type all of that into your calculator what, what I would suggest you do in the y column is not to actually write in these rounded decimals is to actually use your log button and type in log of 2 for example into those um, values there. Your product moment correlation coefficient let's write it down is going to then be minus 9.795 let's round that to minus 0.98 so pretty perfect negative correlation there. With reference to your answer in part B, state whether the exponential model is a good fit for this data. Exponential model is an excellent fit for this set of data because the uh, PMCC is minus 9.8, which is almost perfect negative correlation. And that's what you need to write for part C. The equation of the regression line of Y on X is found to be 2.487, minus 0.320x. Um, part D is find an expression for n in terms of t, giving your answer in the form n equals a b to the power of t, where a and b are constants to be found. So very similar type of rearrangements that we were required to do in part uh, one of this video, uh, exercise 1a. So we're going to take the equation y equals 2.487, minus 0.320x and we're now going to replace y with log n we're going to um, keep I'm not going to keep x we're going to replace it with whoops did that wrong 2.487 minus 0.320t x gets replaced by t you can see that's the case up here so rearranging this now how do we undo a log base 10 we do 10 to the power of both sides so it's 10 to the power of 2.487 minus 0 0.320 times t and then we'll split up the subtraction here by actually i think it wouldn't be a good idea really to do in a division what I'll do is I'll just do a multiplication and keep the negative sign in there. So times 10 to the power of minus uh, 0. Point, whoops, 0. 0.320t. What should I do now? I should probably work out what 10 to the power of um, 2.487 is. 10 to the power of 2.487. That value is about 307 multiply by and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, 10 to the power of minus 3.20 and I'm going to leave t outside the bracket so what I've effectively done here is I've used that indice rule of when you have a power of another power you multiply the powers together uh, what I've effectively done here is undone that rule so the answer therefore is going to be uh, n equals 307 times 10 to the whoops now I'll do this on my calculator now 10 to the power of uh, minus 0 0.320 uh, which is going to be 0 0.48 to the power of t lovely so what we could say here is that the number of radioactive 
substance N is decreasing at a rate of 52% um, each uh, unit of time, e after each minute. Okay. So there we are, that's the answer to this question here then. Have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 1b, but really it's exercise 1c that you need to pay most attention to in this chapter. So if you're feeling comfortable, move on to exercise 1c. Thanks very much for watching.